So last October, I featured a quilt uh, called the Garbage Can Quilt. It was very popular. It's a really cool quilt. I deconstructed it on video and showed you how I took it apart because it was filthy and there were a lot of holes and a lot of problems. So I decided to repair that quilt. And this has been a little bit of a long process. I uh, started maybe four weeks ago tearing it apart and um, getting it cleaned up. But before we get started in that, my name is Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me. I have to admit there were times during this process of fixing this quilt and getting it into a quilt state that I thought about giving up because it was a ton of work, but I am so happy with the finished product. And I'll show you at the end exactly how it turned out. It is completely done. Uh, I have a few family members that would love to have it in their own home <laughs> and it's very fall-like and just, spectacular. I can't believe how well it turned out. I also want to say this was my very first time repairing a quilt and I wanted to record the process. I did make a few mistakes and I'll put up on the screen where I would do things differently. Uh, I probably made a little bit more work for myself but you know what it, it all turned out and it's all really great now. So let's take a look at how I revived the garbage can quilt. So to begin the restoration on this quilt top I'm going to sacrifice one of these edges here that's not in great shape so you can see there's a lot of damage on this edge see here and I'm going to take this row completely off and then I'm going to use these fabrics to repair the holes in the quilt as a whole okay so uh, here is one of the spots that has a hole in it and you can see it's just tearing apart a little bit and uh, it was one of the spots that had the tie in it if you remember from the video that I did back in what October I think last October and I'll put a link to that here so to repair this I ended up taking off two rows of the side so I marked it with a safety pin so I could find the hole and find the square because I have a couple that are like this so to do this um, I can do it a couple different ways. I can actually uh, applique that square on top. You can see if that were turned and um, repair it that way. I could do it from beneath and stitch around like that. And you probably wouldn't see it so I could stitch it down and maybe zigzag with the matching thread. Or I can actually take this square out. So I'm going to actually take this block out and stitch this one in. So to do that, I'm going to first prepare this block. You can see there's still a lot of threads. This was uh, sewn so tightly together. The stitch length was super tight and uh, it caused a lot of uh, trouble when you're trying to unsew with the seam ripper, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to unsew all of these seams and then I'm even gonna extend it in here so I have room to maneuver to put the new block in. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, I'm also going to uh, prepare this piece by uh, cleaning it up and pressing it really well, getting some of this old, if you remember, old blanket out of the edges and uh, just giving it a good press. So this is already coming open a little and that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm just going to pull those stitches out gently. Okay, so I have the two sides pretty well opened. I'm gonna open that one a little bit more. I might even have to go in back in and do a little bit more. And now I'm gonna do the same with these two seams. So here, and uh, realized I'm off camera here, so I'm gonna do the same here and here. So this whole thing will come out then and I'll have lots of room to stitch the next one in. All right, so I'm just gonna do the exact same thing and pull this one out. So normally I would go in from behind and cut the stitches, cut like every fourth stitch and that would make this process easier. But because these are so tightly sewn and the stitch length use is so small, I can't do that. I can't even get my seam ripper underneath. So I'm going through the top and I'm just running the blade gently across those threads and trying to get them open. So uh, just so you know, there's just so many different ways to seam rip and a lot of people have a lot of different techniques. So you can see I can't even get in there. 
so it gets really tricky because I don't want to lose any of my seam allowance but I don't know if you can see that see how tight those stitches are and to even get in there oh I think I might have got under nope I'm just afraid I will rip the whole thing so I'm gonna do it from the top like I have been which is still tricky to do okay so I have a lot of room to work here uh, to put the new piece in I'm gonna set this old piece aside and I'm going to prepare this new piece so uh, there's a lot of um, just residue from the old blanket that was in this and a lot of threads so I'm going to press it really really well and I'm going to do the same with these seams and then I'm going to show how I put it in so I press these all pretty well and uh, cleaned up the edges as best as I can here um, with the exception of some fraying which may or may not get in my way so uh, the next thing we're going to do is take our piece that we prepared and we are going to match right sides together on two sides like this and then I am going to take that to the machine and stitch right there and I will be right back. So I'm just running a stitch quarter inch right across there lining those two pieces up. So this is the one I sewed. I am just going to leave it like this. Actually, I'm going to set that seam just to make sure it relaxes. And then I'm not going to put it uh, to one side or the other until I do the other side. So I'm just going to take this side, which is right across from this one. And I'm going to match those seams. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch along that. So I did uh, the one next to it up in the, the top and the bottom of the block. And then I'm going to do the sides. I'll show you how I do that. I'll be right back. So now that I have these two done, what I'm going to do is go back in and sew these side pieces here. And that will allow me then to sew this middle back in. So I'm just going to match these up as best as I can. And there's one that I forgot to press. All right, and stitch them closed. I'm gonna do that on all four of these. So now I just have to stitch this down on these sides and I'm done with that repair. So um, this is actually the easy part. So uh, to press these, I'm going to nest them just to make it easier, even though everything wasn't quite matched. Let me just press as best as I can here. Put that. So I'm just pressing the seams in opposite directions. Okay. And I'm going to put right sides together here just like this and sew this entire seam. Boy, I had the hardest time even finding the one that I put in and it is right here. This is the repair I did and I'm just going to clean up some of these threads that came through and it's not perfect. I mean, actually my points are pretty good, but uh, if you remember this quilt wasn't uh, perfect either. And you know what? No one's ever gonna know that I replaced that piece. Just gonna press it really well and it is all repaired. So this quilt is all put together. We have all the repairs done. It looks awesome. You can't even tell uh, where I repaired it. So that's great, but we have other issues. So the maker just was very inconsistent with how the seams were placed. Some were uh, pressed open and then um, they were turned as you can see here. So I, before I quilt this or do whatever I'm going to do to it, I wanna make sure I fix that so it lays nice and flat. I also wanna take off all of these uh, fuzzies and frays and loose threads because there are quite a bit. I've already taken off uh, a bunch and um, it looks like I have a lot more to do. So to do this, I just systematically went row by row and um, 
went over the entire quilt. I'm gonna do the same exact thing when I press this and open some of these seams. So to open some of these seams where there's an issue, like right here, I'm just going to open right in here. And I might have to go back with the sewing machine and reinforce that, but I do wanna get that opened up and laying flat. And yeah. So I'm gonna have to pull up right in here to make sure that happens. And see if I can do it with my scissors without making a hole. There we go. So where I open that up, I will go back and reinforce with the machine uh, just so it will um, not have any holes. And I will open that up and press it really well. So I'll do that throughout. There are quite a few blocks, um, so it's gonna take me some time. The next concern I have or issue or whatever is how I'm going to finish this. So I know I don't want to tie it like they had tied it before because this fabric is very brittle. I also don't wanna stitch in the ditch. So to stitch in the ditch means to stitch right in these seams. That's what that is called. And I don't wanna do that because the maker for the most part uh, left the seams open. So if I were gonna do that, I would be sewing directly on or quilting directly on that seam. And I don't wanna do that because it's just gonna weaken that seam. So that for me is why I never uh, open my seams. That's a huge controversy and a big conversation with quilters though. So a lot of them do do that. Um, I get concerned about that, those threads being exposed and possible holes at some point. So I don't do that. But again, there's a lot of people who do and that's what makes the world go round, right? We have all kinds of different opinions about things. So for quilting this, what I'm going to do is probably stitch in the neighborhood it's called. So instead of stitching right in the ditch, I'm gonna stitch in a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. That's going to reinforce some of those seams where they're folded over. And uh, I think it'll look really pretty because it almost look like a plaid. So my pieces are ready to go. This is pressed nice and flat. I got rid of all of those strings and fraying and all that gunk that was in the seams. It took me quite a while to do that, but it is gone. I have to press it, of course, before I sandwich it one last time, but all the seams on the back are nice and flat and wonderful, exactly how we want it. I found this uh, interesting. I don't know, some people might call it ugly. Some people that I know who saw it might call it ugly, but it's an interesting fall fabric for the backing. Uh, I thought it complemented this well. I was gonna do a retro back, but I decided against it. I just wanted something a little bit more modern and I don't wanna hide the fact that I rescued this quilt. In fact, on the label, I will talk about that. And I just think this is like a nod to the past and something maybe to the present. So, and I also think it's just a fun story that not everybody in my life loves this fabric as much as I do. Then lastly, I did cut my batting. This is, I think it's called I think it's a warm and natural product, but I wanna say they call it white and natural or warm and white. Maybe it's warm and white. I'll check and I'll put it on the screen. So I have that pre-cut too. So I'm gonna sandwich this, press it again, of course, sandwich it, quilt it and bind it. And I will be back at the end with the big reveal of the garbage can quilt. Here it is, it's so pretty, it turned out so great. And I even did a flange binding on it. You can see I used uh, vintage fabric for the binding, both pieces right here. And, uh, but the backing, like I said in the video, was uh, store-bought, so, but this was from my own collection and I just love how it turned out. I haven't washed it yet, but I'm going to. It is so soft, so snuggly, and so wonderful. And, uh, you know, when I was trimming it up to square it up, you can see I had to sacrifice some of the squares. Uh, they aren't exactly the same size as these, but it doesn't matter because it turned out so good and it's just, wonderful it's so soft already and i haven't even washed it i love this quilt i love how it turned out and i'm a little bit like addicted now to repairing old quilts so stay tuned for more videos on that as i learn the process and see what works for me i hope you enjoyed this i hope you enjoyed seeing this amazing quilt and how much it 
it just went from you know something that was discarded to something that I will treasure and I I just I couldn't be more happy with this quilt Thank you again for joining me and stay tuned for more videos on repairing quilts, although they do take a lot longer to make because I do have to actually repair the quilts. Uh, they are fun to make and it will get me going with repairing some of these quilts that I have in my collection, like the garbage can quilt. Have a great week and I'll see you soon.